Well, welcome everybody. It is a Tuesday. That's right. And we have a special guest. This is a special tea time. Who else to bring that would be extra special is the lady who wrote the world's first tooth fairy ever. That's right. We're going to talk some fairy tales and some children's books, some foundation donating books, pajamas. We're going to talk about it all today on tea time. So I have the incredible Zane Carson Carroot in the back. She is the executive producer, vice president of Carroot Foundation, the philanthropist, international bestseller. She is all of it and a good cup of tea because she's going to be serving you guys all a good TEA this afternoon. So I want you all to share this tea time, go to the channel, Miss you, this is tea time uh, YouTube channel, give it a quick subscribe and all of the podcast stations that you find me on, give it a quick subscribe, share it with all your friends and loved ones because there's a different flavor of tea that's served every time we serve the TEA with Miss Liz. So let me give you a little intro. This stuff, and then we're going to get Zane in. loved ones oh and we're gonna start that are we oh, okay so if you see a bloop miss liz is still here you'll still hear me don't worry just keep on going disclaimer for miss liz's tea time live show miss liz is going live using streamyard before leaving a comment please grant streamyard permission permission to see your name at streamyard.com Please be advised that the content brought forward for any tea time show hosted by myself miss liz is always brought forward in good faith however may bring forward dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform the facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the giving time of airing all tea time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment in taking any action that may relate to the discussion the content brought forward brought forward may include discussion for some where they may be emotionally at risk it is significant to know that this show is engaging in discussion forums only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Miss Liz, through my email at bookiemissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in today's show in any aspect, I myself, Miss Liz, welcomes you. And should you find that the show is not made for you at this time, I respect those wishes and we'll see you at a later show at a later date and time. Now, again, all tea times this year on in 2023 are done on a Thursday except for special tea times and rescheduled tea times, which are, are done on a Monday and Tuesday. So now I'm going to get a little bit on who Zane Carson Carew is. She's a philanthropist. Zane Carson Carew is an award-winning international children's book author, a certified business etiquette and protocol professional, and sits on numerous nonprofit boards in Houston, Texas, as well as the vice president of Carruth Foundation. Carruth has completed five captivating books in the trademark, trademark series about the world's first tooth fairy, including the world's first tooth fairy ever, The Adventures of Anna, 
and Bella and her magic wand. And Bella, I've not seen, I think Abella, Abella, I think it is, uh, starts a tooth fairy school. Abella goes to the rodeo and Abella gets a new hairdo, which is the latest book. So we'll be talking about that today. These books that teach responsibility and kindness, her books have won admire, ad, admire, admirable awards, such as the Story Monster Seal of Approval, the Story Book of Approval, the Purple Dragonfly Book Award, and now the Parent and Teacher Choice Award, one of the most recognized international awards by both parents and teachers. Zane is also the executive producer of Abella, First Tooth Fairy. She's a co-host, a live stream broadcast on USA Global TV and Radio titled Elegance, Polish, Demur, 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 I can't say it, and Pause Living, the late, the last Thursday of each month. I'll get her to bring that up. I'm having trouble again with my tongue here. One of Karud's greatest joys as an author is donating her books to young children. She has served as a board member on the Houston Grand Opera Board since 2015 and serves on the marketing and communicate, communication committee as well as special event committee. She also sits on the SPCA Board of Directors and serves in the capacity of Assistant Secretary and serves on the Capital Campaign Committee. She's very active on the Capital Campaign Committee for the new campus and her person personally raised over three million. She she has been on the board of directors of Discovery Green Conserv Conservatory for three years. In 2020, Zane was honored to be named on ABC 13 Women of Distinction, an honoree of Houston Business Journal, Woman Who Means Business Awards, received the Story Monster Book Award, and was elected as a 2020 Top Impact Maker honoree by K CKW Luke Magazine. Now, let me get her in here, and anything that I've said incorrect, I'm going to get her to share with you. My tongue is just twisting today. Uh, and I'm going to get Zane to share with all of you guys. So let me get her in here. Welcome, Zane. Hi. How are you? Oh, I can't hear you. Why can't I hear you? <laughs> are you there? Yes, I'm here. Oh, there you go. I can hear you now. Okay, good. So Zane, for all the things that I said wrong, if you could correct it really quickly and then we'll get into the books and all that good stuff. Oh, okay. Well, the, the broadcast is called Elegance, Polished Demeanor, and Posh Living. And I have guests on there who, in their own way, contribute to an elegant way of life for someone. And that can be an interior decorator, a doctor. Really, everybody has something to contribute. And it's just a fun show. It's 30 minutes long and it's... um pre-recorded which is good because you can you know cut out the bloopers but um and I, I did a lot of bloopers last week for some reason <laughs> one of those days <laughs> the bloopers are what sell everything man I, oh that's what i tell gosh. everybody miss liz is i'm the blooper lady like i can't pronounce stuff sometimes and i'm just like what the heck is going on here <laughs> well join the club i'm I, i'm i'm with you i hear you i feel you <laughs> <laughs> so zane i want to get into who you were as a little girl and who you are now as a grown lady for the viewers that are just tuning in. Well, you know, I grew up with, like every, I grew up in a small town, which gave me a lot of unique opportunities that are only available in a small town. We were big on Friday night football. My parents had parties one right after another. They were big in bridge. They were big in dance clubs. So we always had people at our house. We were always getting ready for a party or cleaning up after a party. And um, El I grew up in El Campo, which is a rice farming community. Uh, I just like to say of the world, but it's really not of the world. But it's a rice farming community in the South. And um, it was just a different way of living because everybody had a rice farm that we would go to their farms. Maybe we'd ride horses, but it was just a, a lot of fun. And there's a difference growing up in a small town, I think, versus a big town because you know, you walk to your best friend's house, you get on your bike and you ride over there and everything was just a lot simpler back then. I like small towns. I come from a small town where I live now. It's a, they call it like a semi city, but 
I grew up in a small town of less than 12,000 people. So oh, what, what town? Hearst, Ontario. So it's way up north. I'm in Cornwall now, but I oh, come yeah. from the northern cold, minus 50 weather. Yes, I'm an Eskimo. Oh, my <laughs> word. Yeah, you, you, you've, oh, gosh, well, you've got thin blood then if you can live like that. Oh, yeah, I got the northern th thick blood in me. Yes. <laughs> so, Zane, what got you into writing children's books? Well, I've always loved to write. And I actually had a teacher that encouraged me. I wrote a little story one time. We were told to write a story in English class and she raved about it. And I didn't grow up hearing a lot of real positive. My parents just were not that way to shower you with a lot of positive affirmations or compliments. So I was so taken back by getting compliments that I thought, well, this was really neat. So I just I started writing in a journal and I just love to write. And one day about. 27, 28 years ago, I picked up a spiral notebook and just started writing a story based on my daughter, but it was about a little fairy and had no idea where this story was going to go until and she lost the pearl off her tooth. And I thought, oh my gosh, this could be about the tooth fairy. So I took that idea and wrote the book, The World's First Tooth Fairy. And, um, and it just explains how the legend of the tooth fairy came about. It You'll never have to wonder once you read my book, you'll know, and then you will have peace about it. <laughs> well, and so many of us have grew and grew up with the tooth fairy, right? Uh, and, yes. You know, it just brings us back to the little girl or the little boy, you know, oh, put your tooth under the pillow or, you know, some of us were taught to put it in our socks, put it on the bookshelf. Like there were so many different stories, right? I just love the title, the the world's first tooth fairy ever. Like it's so original. It's the world's first tooth fairy, guys. Like <laughs> yeah. this tooth fairy goes around the world. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. It's over. Yeah, that's it. You know, every country has a different tooth fairy tradition, and that was a lot of fun when I did some research on that topic for a, for a paper I had to write or an article I had to write. And uh, it's yes, yeah, so all over the world, people celebrate the passage of teeth. It is a rite of passage for children, as we all know and love and <laughs> and have so, experienced firsthand. So, Zane, doing all that research on the tooth fairies and the tradition, what was the one that shocked you the most? I think probably maybe Mexico or one of them. It was a rat. Was it, was their tooth fairy? It wasn't wasn't a fairy wasn't as pretty like what we have but they had different animals that represented you know getting that tooth or the tradition and that's what surprised me the most is uh, some of them weren't as pretty as ours they weren't as um whimsical they were just different just very different wow i just learned something new <laughs> <laughs> But that's what I mean. When we don't, when we don't know, right? We need to educate, and we need to bring that to the table so other people can understand. Yes, um, yeah, and that's an interesting topic to Google uh, tooth fairy traditions around the world. And and I may have it wrong. It might not have been Mexico that had that rat, but somebody had that, and I'm still traumatized by it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know growing up, if I lost my tooth at different places, like if I lost my tooth at grandma and grandpa's, we had to put it in a certain spot. If we lost it at home, really? we put it under a pillow. If we lost it at a friend's house. We were supposed to put it into our socks because the tooth fairy was coming to visit and wanted, when you go to sleep, you take your socks off. Yeah. So it didn't know to find it under the pillow or find it on the dresser. <laughs> so I was always like, why in the sock? Like, seriously, like, it's going to be like, why there? I love that. Well, yeah. you had imaginative parents and playful parents, it sounds like. Yeah. Well, I had imaginary friends' parents. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't sleep up very much at anyone's house. But I mean, the ones that I did, I, I think I lost two teeth at a friend's house. And they were like, put it in the sock. And I was like, what? <laughs> I've never heard that. Now, I might, you're going to have to repeat that sometime. I think that's, I think that's very clever. Right? It's the sock fairy. <laughs> yes, the sock fairy. <laughs> so how did you get the name for the little fairy? I just, I love the name. I just kind of researched some names and I, I just love the name of Bella. I think it's very pretty. It's feminine. And, uh, but her best friend's name is Darcy, D-A-R-C-I-E. 
and her brother is Gage. So just names that I came up with, you know, just at my discretion, you just could, that's what's the wonderful thing about being a writer. You know, anything goes, you can do whatever. <laughs> so it's Abella, right? Abella, yes. Abella. I don't um, know why I was putting that M in there. Like I was putting Annabella. I don't know why. A I lot of people M. call her Annabella or, uh, yeah, they pronounce it lots of different ways, but it's, it's just real simple. Abella. It's like still it. Abella, but it's Abella. So Abella has gone on some really incredible adventures. <laughs> yes, she has. <laughs> yeah. She got her magic wand and then she started a tooth fairy school and she goes to the rodeo and, she gets a new hairdo and that's always fun too. <laughs> well, we were talking about the hairdo in the background because we were talking about perms. <laughs> I don't know if any of your viewers out there have ever gotten a perm when you were a little girl and you were just like, oh my God, this is bad. But you do it again, the second and, again, and the yeah, third and the fourth. You just go to the drugstore full of hope. <laughs> you have so much hope that you're going to get these luscious, gorgeous curls. But what do you end up with? You end up with like this wiggle. I was called Wigglies in school <laughs> because I had so many perms growing up. Everybody called me Wiggly, Wiggly Giggly. And, oh and I was my just like, oh That's my cute. Yeah. Yes. Well, I, gig I, I giggled when I got nervous. I always, uh, when I got tired, I giggled. When I was nervous, I giggled. Uh, when I was scared, I giggled. So my, I have the nickname Giggles. I uh, bet you do. <laughs> but Wiggly Giggly is what I was called in school from a lot of my classmates. Uh, yeah. Well, I think that's a sweet name. Very so sweet let's, name. So Zane, let's hear about Abella's hairdo. What happened there? Well, she wanted to something different. She'd worn her hair the same way all those years. And Darcy tried to talk her out of it. Darcy's her best friend and is in every book as well. And um, so Bella said, no, I've already bought the, the permanent from the drugstore and I'm going to Miss Clark's house this afternoon and she's going to give it to me. So off they went. Well, Bella was really excited. And then she kept watching her roll her hair in these little bitty tiny curlers. And even Bella was smart enough to know those little bitty curlers for my long hair is going to be disastrous. So she, oh my gosh, she just had hair this big it was it, abella's hair was everywhere she, that's usually she what happens right in the door yes yeah, she just went, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so um she didn't panic but they went to the the beauty salon and the lady fixed it and abella the you know the story the moral of the story is you know so what you tried something new it didn't turn out you know you can always fix it you see most everything is fixable and her best friend Darcy was with her every step of the way because the books kind of focus the thread between all my books is friendships and how Darcy is a good friend to Abella because Abella is the one who does everything and Darcy's just happy, happy to go along, get along kind of gal. I like it. <laughs> well, and your books are about taking responsibility and kindness. So yes. is there a message in each of the books that you've shared? Yes, yes, there certainly is. Especially the, the very first one was about bravery because she got lost and she didn't she didn't freak out. She just stayed calm, thought about how she was going to get home. And anyway, she was rescued. And then the second one, she gets her magic wand. Well, she messes up her brother's baseball game. Well, she took responsibility for that and apologized. And Darcy was so sweet and didn't make her feel bad about making that mistake. And then going to the rodeo, she uh, followed directions when she didn't want to. She wanted to do what she wanted to do, but the mother cow told her differently. And she she followed directions. So that one was a lot of fun. And then the hairdo one is just, uh, you know, trying something new, being brave, taking responsibility. But, you know, don't freak out over it. You know, things happen in life. It's OK. <laughs> And don't do it again, but yeah, don't do it again. we already know that where that goes, right? Zane, we do yes. it again. <laughs> For some reason, you just think the next time, the next time. Yeah, because I didn't ever get curls like you did. My hair would just burn because my hair is so fine. It would just, it was horrible. It was just terrible. But I did it numerous times. <laughs> yeah, my hair is so thick. I look like a big gold sheep. Like, I mean, like it was like, poof. Oh, like I bet you would look like a Bella. <laughs> 
who knows? Maybe Miss Liz and Abella will have an adventure together. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I just love how the, you bring play to your books, the children's books, because we need play. We need imagination, right? A oh, little, yes. We need yes. those kids opening up their minds and just trying and getting brave, getting courageous. Well, thinking outside the box, doing something different, um, spreading a little kindness and humor. I mean, I think children, I think innocence really needs to be bar brought back into our children's lives. And um, I did a 3D video of a Bella. Uh, it's called Abella's First Tooth. The guy who produced Thomas the Tank Engine produced it. And then the guy who won a Grammy for Mr. Rogers Neighborhood did the song. And it's, it's wonderful, but my, the whole reason I did that, I was really hoping to get a series picked up, which it has not happened yet, because I just thought, you know, we've got to bring some innocence back to kids, especially these TV shows they watch. It's, it's, um, it's so, yeah, some of, yeah, it's some over of the, the top scary. I think just personally, yeah. I think it's too much the way violence and, but just, you know, bring back, I mean, we, my kids grew up watching Casper the Friendly Ghost, Speed Racer. I mean, you know, innocent little things. Yeah. But we need that. We need to bring that back. And that's why I'm, uh, I'm proud of my books because they are just pure friendships, pure innocence. And, um, you know, they just take you to a different place in your mind. I am so glad that you brought that up thing because we need to bring the innocence. We need to bring children back to being children. You know, yes. we're, we're forcing them to be adults way too soon. We're giving them topics that they don't even need to be talking about, you know, go and read a fairy tale book and, you know, open the mind, imagine, have some imaginary friends. I had a lot of them growing up. Did you? Know, you? What were some of their names? I in a lot of trouble too, because <laughs> I would go and take the root bar from my grandma's garden and say, oh no, but Betsy took it from you, grandma. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be like, Betsy's not here, Miss, you know, Liz is here. And I'd be like, oh, shoot. And then I would try and bring it on my siblings because I loved the rhubarb. And she always knew it was me because I always went in and grabbed a, a container of sugar. I, I busted myself with the sugar. Oh, well, I've never had rhubarb, but evidently it needs sugar to, to taste good. Oh, yeah. It, it, it makes it, it makes the world a difference. Just add the sugar and the rhubarb is good. And you would eat it raw? Oh, yeah. You just oh, pull it out of the garden? Pull it out of the garden and just dip it in the sugar and eat away. <laughs> well, that sounds fun. I could have been your friend. I could have grew bar with you. <laughs> and when my grandpa was the junkyards, we used to go in the junkyards where all the cars were and we pretend we oh, were race yeah. car drivers and we believed that our cars were magical, like the magic school bus. And oh yeah, we opened it <laughs> right away. Miss Liz had fun when I when I used my imagination, when I was other stuff, it wasn't so fun, but I always but tried to keep that imagination like open. You yeah. have a very large, vivid imagination. I, do you write children's books? Not yet. <laughs> well, I think there's a book in there, and I and I think there needs to be some rhubarb in there. <laughs> Maybe I'll write that. My grandma's ninety-seven, so I can ask her some uh, some of the things that she used to tell me when she, I used to get caught. So that's a good idea. Yeah, now's the time to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my grandma is my best friend. So, you know, oh. we need to keep that relationship alive, you know, and get imagination from the older people because the seniors, they got a vivid imagination too, and they could yes. write a good story. Well, and that would be a good project for y'all to write that that book. I think you and your grandmother should do that. Yeah, I think, I think you know, we should have those kind of books out there where we have, yes. you know, the, the stories of grandma and grandpa. And how we grew up, yes. right? And have yes. our grandparents write with us, like be co-authors. I think you'd be. I know, cool. yeah. Well, yes, yeah. My mother writes children's books. Well, she wrote one. She's way more talented than I am, but um, it was it was great. She um, she sold a lot of copies. She it did real well, but uh, it was a book of stories of little imaginary animals. Mostly, were all were animals, but it was fun. So, Zane, do you remember the nursery rhymes growing up? Yes, mo pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I feel that we need to bring those back too. 
Yes, maybe not so drastic, like falling out of a tree in a, in a <laughs> right. Grill. When I found out about that one, I was like, "Oh, I don't know if I like." It. Yeah, I mean, they were pretty Grimm's fairy tale. There was a reason they called it Grimm's fairy tales, I think, because yeah, yeah. I think some we need of those to little that. nursery rhymes. <laughs> so, if you yeah. could write a nursery rhyme, Zane, what would you write it about? Well, I, I don't know. I would. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> For all the viewers out there, let's start getting nursery rhymes. You know, let, let's let's bring the nursery rhymes back. You know, just spare the moment. Just write it. Well, that would rhyme. be a fun contest to have for your right? listeners to uh, give us your best four line nursery rhyme. And, uh, you know, and then pick one and then and I'll send them a set of books. I think that'd be fun. <laughs> I think that'd be fun, too. And I'm kind of curious what my viewers and listeners would come up with. Four lines contest nursery rhyme. Come on, we got it. We're gonna yeah, put it out yeah, there. Yeah, that would be fun. Everybody's a winner. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and bringing up your childhood memories and stuff like that. Let's make it fun. Let's make it playful. So yes. for all the for all the viewers and listeners that are listening now, it's out there. But share this tea time and get it out there. And we're gonna run this. And anyone that sends me a four line nursery rhyme, I'm gonna send it to Zane, and we're gonna just we're gonna pick. Who's, yes, who we was. are. And I am happy to send a complete set of the world's first world's first tooth fairy trademark <laughs> series. <laughs> Say that all five times. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when our tongues get all twisted and we're yeah. so excited and we're happy, you know, the tongue twisters come in and then we well, want yeah, to say your something. Is- your right? mind's thinking faster and your tongue can talk. <laughs> so Zane, I want to get into your tea. So if I give you the letters T-E-A, what tea would you give to the viewers today? Well, I would think that kindness, responsibility, friendships. I'm a huge believer in not kicking people when they're down. And you, you see that a lot in my books because Lilla Bella, she's obnoxious. I mean, not obnoxious. She's rambunctious. And she does a lot of things that, um, you know, come back to, to, to haunt her. But, you know, she always makes good on it. But uh, her little best friend, Darcy, never makes her feel bad. She just says, oh, remember when you saved that little frog? Or remember when you did that? You're an awesome maker, Abella. And I'm, I'm huge in that. And uh, sometimes it's tempting, especially if you think what someone did was like, seriously. But you just have to bite your tongue and... Um, not make people feel bad. People beat themselves up enough, in my opinion. At least I know I do. I don't need anybody reminding me of coulda, shoulda, done, or woulda better. But we all know we coulda. <laughs> what a coulda, shoulda. We, we've all been down that road, right? Yes, yes. So, Zane, growing up, did you ever say that woulda, coulda, shoulda? <laughs> I think I didn't hear about that really until I got in high school or maybe it was out of high school. And I remember the, my friend who said it could have, should have, would have, but didn't. And I thought, okay, now that makes sense. (laughs) That makes a lot of sense. (laughs) Could have, should have, would have, but didn't. (laughs) Didn't even go there. (laughs) No, I wish I'd have thought of it though. (laughs) I want to get into your favorite color, Zane. Your favorite color is blue. My favorite color is blue. I love blue and yellow together, and I love blue and orange. I just like blue. I just love blue. I have a lot of blue in my closet, and my decorating in my homes are, is a lot of blue. So it's it's blue. It's blue. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite color? My favorite color is blue and orange. Blue and orange. Yes. Yes, I love those two combinations together, like an orange striped shirt and a blue blazer. To me, that's just knockout killer. I love that. Right? I, f- I find it's because you're adding the, the 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 sky and the sunset together, right? But very clever. Oh, you see, that's a good imagination. Yes. You know, because the, cl- the sunset has to move the clouds in order for it to shine. Yes. Yes. Well, I'm going to remember that next time I wear <laughs> blue and orange combination. <laughs> so does blue represent anything for you growing up? No, no, I just find it a pretty color. Yeah, no, no. I mean, my favorite bird is a red bird, but my favorite color is not red. But and my favorite bird is not a cardinal. I mean, a blue jay. Yeah, it's just 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're just flipping it all over. We're, we're just having a good old twisted tea here. <laughs> yes. So Zane, I asked you one word to describe yourself and you gave me the word passionate. Why that word? Oh, because, oh gosh. Yes, I'm very passionate. And when I get on something, I am 120% committed to it. And it is, it can be exhausting for me and for other people around me, but um, I don't tackle anything halfway. I'm just, I'm passionate about the causes I believe in. And, um, and I, and I, and I act on it and I act passionately. So that was, I think that's one word that describes me as passionate. I love it. And I love that people can take one word and describe themselves. You know, yes. sometimes when I ask that question, people are like one word. Ooh, that's a hard one. And I'm like, it is a hard one. That's why I ask it. I don't do easy. <laughs> well, what's yours? What's your one word description? Different. Different. I like that. I like that a lot. I love that. Good for you. Yes. Different. Yeah. Because I don't serve the same way. I don't look at things the same way. I'm very different. I, I analyze a lot. I look deep inside. So yeah, I'm different. You're different. And that's a good different. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, good for you. So I want to get into Abella. Is there oh. any more adventures for her coming? Well, yes, there is. Um, uh, she's going to get into meeting some racehorses. We have a couple of racehorses and, um, and I, I, I one of that that's going to be in the book is called that's my boxer. All one word. That's my boxer. And he got hurt several different times, but he still made it to the track anyway. So she's going to befriend him and, um, it's going to be just a fun book. Well, all of them are fun, you know, 26 pages, lots of big pictures, but it will be about the racehorses. And ideally it would be a trilogy, but I'm just not sure. But um, we go to Saratoga Springs in upstate New York for the summer. And that's where they have a lot of horse racing. So I've met a lot of people with farms up there that have the, that, you know, keep the racehorses, you know, when they become sires or uh, mayors. So I've made a lot of friends in that. So I have a lot of people I can talk to and interview and get a lot of background stuff. I think that's really cool. And I like that. Is it? And that's my boxer. I like that's that. My boxer. That's, boxer. <laughs> that's my boxer. That's <laughs> my boxer. Say that five times. That's my boxer. That's my boxer. <laughs> oh, he is so playful. He, he loves to play with my hair. And uh, oh, he's so sweet. You know, they're like they're they're wonderful they're like dogs in a lot of ways they recognize your voice your smell and uh your mannerism so he's a he's a sweetheart he's not so fast but he is very sweet so when is that book going to come out i haven't even started it it takes about oh, a year i was hoping that that my boxer is coming out that's my boxer that's that's <laughs> In the, in the pipeline right up here. No, I've got to start it because it takes about a year because I self-publish. And that is a laborious, laborious, time-consuming project. You know, checking, double-checking, and, you know, you've got to hire all these people to fine-tune it. But it takes about a year. So I need to get started on it because one of the ladies in Saratoga, she's got a fabulous farm and she invited me over. She says, Oh, you've, you've got to include these animals in your next book. And so I went and I took pictures and I wrote notes. And so, yeah, I got a lot to put in that book. There's a lot of pressure about that book actually now. <laughs> <laughs> and here I am. Where is that? That's my boxer book. <laughs> that, that's my boxer's be a great book. Once it gets out, <laughs> I'll have to get that one for my granddaughter. That's my boxer. Yes. <laughs> So Zane, I want to get into yeah, the Car Root Foundation. So could you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, okay. Brady's parents were extremely philanthropic, very philanthropic. And when they passed away, <clears throat> you know, like everybody knows, you pay your taxes right off the top. There's no tax break. You pay your taxes. And then they took a big sizable chunk of their money and set it aside for a foundation. And uh, that's that is the foundation that um, we give to a lot of different causes. And his parents didn't put any. He's head of it now. He's the president. And then I served with him. And um, we can give to just about whatever we want. But 
you know, it's a small family foundation, so it's not humongous, but um, it's a, it's nice. And it gives you a good feeling to know that you can make a difference and you can help like certain schools or certain medical studies or, and we give to just a variety of different causes. Some of them on an annual basis, you know, they count on you. And then some of them as they come up, but um, I'm very proud of my association. I had wanted to be on that board ever since we got married, but Brady never would let me. I, I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe I'm too bossy. I don't know. But, but well, you one day he did. He, so, so, so then you've been on boss. many, you've been on many, many boards. So yes, what do you get from being on the boards? Well, it's, it's a, like the SPCA obviously is very close to my heart because I love animals and I love dogs. And actually Brady's parents were big in the SPCA. So I feel very proud to continue the torch that they started. And then um, Theater Under the Stars, Tuts, I love live music, live musicals, live theater. I think that's wonderful for kids to experience and for people. It just brings you joy when you go to see a good live theater. And then Discovery Green, which is a fabulous park here in Houston that started out as a parking lot, 11 acre. Well, it's now 11 acres, but it started out a huge parking lot. It's one of the finest parks you'll see anywhere. And it's all, all privately funded. It's only, it's funded from foundations and individuals and not the government, not the city. It's a privately funded park. And people come from lots of different cities to look at Discovery Green and to take away from some of the stuff that we've done on that park. It's highly successful. I like that it's privately owned. Yes, it's, it's well, you know, that's just like anything. I think philanthropic, philanthropic efforts get a bad rap sometime. But what people don't realize, when you go to the med center, like in Houston, one of the biggest med centers in the world, those big hospitals, they are the way they are because they're funded by families and foundations. You don't go in there. This isn't the VA hospital that the government does. This is the best of everything because there have been very generous people that have given to these hospitals. And I think that I just don't think that the people get a, a good rap. Sometimes people, I don't know. I, I had a hairdresser one time. I had to quit going to her because she was made such snide remarks about different things that I was involved in. So I just don't think people get it. You don't have the best of the best government funded. It just doesn't work that way because the government can't. They just don't have the money. But, you know, private individuals, if whatever their passion is, they give to it and it makes a huge difference. Well, I think you just mentioned that, Zane. You know, when it's privately funded, the passion is there. Yes. When it's government funded, they just feel like, oh, here's the funds here. We don't need to be bothered with you anymore. You know? Yes. Oh, well, that doesn't get done. No. Well, you got to wait for your next grant. You got to wait for your next funding. But when it's privately owned, the passion is there. The purpose is there. And you have people engaging in the foundations, in the boards, you know, asking, why is this not working? Why is that working? You know, I, a lot of government, we get a lot of stigma on privately owned um, fundraisers and foundations and organizations because the government fund comes in and says, oh, no, 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 but they don't have this. They don't have that. They don't have this. But they're the ones that don't have all of those things that they're saying we don't have. Exactly. And the nice thing about privately fund uh organizations like parks and hospitals and whatever is they're constantly improving they never get stagnant it's like there's always fresh ideas fresh new events coming up or yep. for parks it's anything but just like the spca that is privately funded and that we have a fabulous campus the spca and it treats every kind of animal in the world. We've had bears, bobcats, and uh, everything. The, uh, eagles, but privately funded is a good thing. And I think everybody benefits from these generous people who do that. Well, Not I really me. want to just thank you for being on these boards. You know, we have so much stigma in the world on the good stuff. And we have all of the positive on the negative stuff. 
You know, I know. we really just got to flip it. Like, we We've, need to. Yes. The, 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 it's just like a flip just burger. Goes, we just got to flip the burger. Like, that's right. <laughs> everybody needs to start eating a good back. burger. <laughs> I think when and people are not eating enough burgers, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Zane, you've ra raised over 300, uh, 3 million. So is that what all of the different boards that you've been on? Or no, just that's one? just the SPCA oh, because wow. we we're building a new campus and we, you know, it's expensive. And um, now I was on the capital campaign committee and that, you know, I, I got private donations and from foundations and, um, individuals and then you know we, we've chaired three of their galas that's a fundraiser event and um actually we'll probably chair it again next year it's their 100th year anniversary for the sbca in houston 100 years that's pretty good they have wow. they've done a tremendous amount of good they train a lot of these dogs that go to the vets you know those those rescue dogs they train those and um, so they do a tremendous amount, the Houston SPCA. So do you have any events coming up? Yes, uh, we are chairing the Tuts Gala, Theater Under the Stars, November 11th. And then we'll be going to the SPCA Gala October 27th. But um, yeah, that's that's our, I've got two or, two or three more tables to fill. <laughs> awesome. Now I want to get into, you had mentioned to me in the background before we went live about pajamas. So let's oh, get yes. into what, what's going on with pajamas. I'm so excited <laughs> to get this out there. <laughs> well, Neiman, and thank you for asking, but Neiman Marcus has a program that's called Books to Bed and they pair, uh, they pair a pair of pajamas with a book and they have selected my little books to be part of their program and see they have, they designed these, this little pair of pajamas, the, the illustrations from my books, and it's in size two to 10. Look how cute. Isn't that Christmas, adorable? Beautiful Just, Christmas gifts to go with books and yes, pajamas, right? Yes, and the official launch is October 14th in the Galleria in Houston at Neiman's. And you can reserve your copy by going to RSVP Houston at NeimanMarcus.com. And then once after the 14th, they will be online in the books to bed section. You know, if you just pull up Neiman Marcus, click on books to bed. I mean, they've got some great books. Madeline is there, the little engine that could love you to the moon and back. So my little Bella's in good company. <laughs> so how did you find out about books to bed? You know, it, it was the grace of God. It, that's, that's all it was because I was at this fundraiser and, um, and met this young lady. She goes, oh, I remember you from the from an SPCA gala. So we started talking and, and you know, it always goes, well, what do you do? What do you do? And I said, well, what do you do? She goes, oh, well, I work for Neiman Marcus. I said, well, that's wonderful because I've been trying to get into Neiman Marcus to have a book signing for several years. I just can't find the right person. She goes, well, that would be me. So she gave me her card. And we scheduled to meet for lunch, I don't know, about two or three weeks later. And when I got there, she said, have you heard of our books to bed program? I said, no. She said, but anyway, so she sent I, all my books that I had sent her to the department for books to bed. And they voted on putting my books in the program. So I was, you could have blown me over with a feather. So this was, it's taken about a year to get this, get this far with it. But let me show you the pajamas again. So you see how cute. See, look. Oh, they're adorable. <laughs> <laughs> my granddaughter is going to be three in March. And I'm like, oh, my oh, God. Oh, she are needs so a adorable. <laughs> yes. And right now, the books that you can pair with it is A Bella Goes to the Rodeo or the original World's First Tooth Fairy or A Bella Goes to the Rodeo, which this is such a fun book. We could talk about this. It's a fun book. But. Yeah, anyway, yes, that. I'm very excited and I really, really want this program to be successful. So please, Books to Bed, Neiman Marcus. So I got one question for Books to Bed. Okay. All the books that are in Books to Bed, do they have pajamas or is it just yours? Yes, they all have pajamas. So if you, you see something that you like, if you have a, a little grandson or a little nephew or something or 
you could pick one from the little engine that could. So in the, they were all up there. You could, I don't know, there's maybe 10 of them, but um, it's nice because Brady and I were in New York and we, you know, Neiman's now owns Bloomingdale's, believe it or not. So wow. we went in there and they had several of them left, but um, I don't know which stores will actually carry them, but they will be available online for everybody. But um, so it's just, it's, we're rolling out the launch on the 14th. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited for you. And last year, that's where I did all my Christmas shopping for my grandkids and my family was all of my guests that were on tea time. So if they have books, they have pajamas, they have clothing. They have chocolates. I, that's where I did my Christmas shopping last year uh, oh, to support wonderful. all of my guests that are on. So I got like books. I got pajamas. I got a, a, a badass. Bonnie was on. I got her clothing line. Uh, you know, we just need to start supporting people that we host, uh, you know. Well, and, you know, we're just a little struggling. Uh, me, I'm just a little struggling author here. And most of us, I think, are just kind of struggling in today's economy for different things. But um, anyway, well, good. Well, I would appreciate you do getting a, a little pair for your niece or. Oh yeah, and I'll and I'll send you the picture of her in them. Like I am. Yes, and I'll I put it on like, my website. I'll be like, here's my granddaughter. Like, yeah, <laughs> and she loves books. That's one thing I can say. With my daughter, she has gotten her into books when she was like a year and a half. She loves story time and she she she's really, really good with books. So yeah, for sure. That that's one of the Christmas gifts. I've already wrote it down. Get me get for Christmas. <laughs> oh, my well, well, I'm glad to hear that. That makes me very happy. And I look forward to seeing the picture of her. What's your little granddaughter's name? Raylan. Oh, that's pretty. That's that's pretty. Yes. Really. Yeah. Daddy named daddy named a baby. So <laughs> <laughs> it's different and it's spelled different too. It's R A E L I Y uh, L N Y. Re oh, oh Reland. Yeah. Reland. Yeah. Yeah. That's Reland. Cool. And then my, uh, my youngest wants to have Waylon. So I'm, I'm like, just bring all the little Lins to grandma. <laughs> <laughs> So let's talk about the rodeo. I want to I want to get a rodeo ride here. Oh gosh, well the rodeo, the, the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo is the largest in the world. And uh for 20, 21 and 22, my husband was chairman of the board and I was the first lady of the rodeo. And I had my own carriage and oh my gosh, and some of the best stars uh come to perform. Um well, Willie Nelson, I mean, he, who doesn't love him? That but. was my first concert that I ever went to was Willie Nelson and the Nitty Gritty Band. And everybody's oh, like, really? Yes, That's the first yes. one you went to? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and they still perform, but they're not called the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band anymore, are they? I'm not sure. I think they changed their name. I think they did. And I, and, and they're from this area. I should know that because they're all from Texas. But um, Tim McGraw, Blake Shelton, Gwen Stefani. Uh, everybody on their way up, like uh, Taylor Swift, Adrian Grandi, Adrian, how do you say her name? Um, even Elvis Presley, Cher, they've all been to the rodeo. But it's it's a fundraiser, and they give away $22 million worth of scholarships every year. Wow. They're a nonprofit, but they, they give away $22 million. Even during COVID, they managed to give away their commitment. Uh, they paid their commitment, but it brings in a tremendous amount of money for the city, for restaurants, for clothing, for food, taxis, Uber, whatever. Uh, it's a big, huge money making deal for Houston, Texas. And the Cowboys love it because the purses are large. And it's such a, you know, oh my gosh, everything in Houston is so big in the, the facilities. I've heard so that. <laughs> You, know, you just spread out. It's I and mean, there's a, a carnival and there's all kind of food and even Bun B. You, you heard of Bun B, that rapper? Well, he has a hamburger place called Tril Trillions or Trilogy Trillion. I don't know something. And uh, anyway, he has a hamburger place at the rodeo, and now he's got one in Houston. And people just wait in line. My husband drove by the other day, and he said the line was around the block just oh. to get into. Trill burgers? I think it's trill burgers. Anyway, bun See, I told you we were talking about burgers earlier. Yeah. <laughs> we go right That's back to burgers. We need burgers. 
Yes, yes. If you come to Houston, I'll take you to the Trill Burger. <laughs> I'm a beef girl. Like I like my ribs. I I I, I like my meat, guys. I I'm just. I just do too. Yeah. No, I'm a big red meat protein eater. It's good for you, and it helps your body produce collagen. Yeah. So I want to talk about Abella in the rodeo. Is that why you wrote about the rodeo? I did because I had access, you know, to everybody. I mean, I, I interviewed this, the world's greatest, bravest bullfighter, Leon Coffey. Now he's not a bullfighter like in Spain, but uh, he, they, what they do is they divert the bull's attention. You know, when the cowboy gets bucked off, that's what a bullfighter is. They say that, that life. So I interviewed Leon and, um, you know, it's just, it's a wonderful experience to be able to go backstage like that and see all these people and um, just experience it firsthand. So that's why I wrote the book, because I had access to a lot of stuff that people didn't know about. Can you show us the book? Yes, <laughs> certainly. Oh, I love the color. I love yeah. the cover. Like the colors are just beautiful. That's there's Leon Coffey. The greatest, bravest bullfighter in the world. Wow. He is great. He he was so tickled when I wrote that book about him. And the rodeo was so sweet that we had about three book signings two years in a row. And Leon would come and uh, you know, I'd do the book reading and uh it was it was a lot of fun. They um yeah, I was very pleased that they sell the book at the rodeo because you know, you feel bad. The chairman of the board's wife wrote a book about the rodeo and they rolled their eyes. But once they read it, they saw, it. you know, it was it was OK. I was just going to ask you, do they sell it at the rodeo? Yes, they do. They do. And it's a good seller. Yeah, it's all propped up in their different merchandising areas. <laughs> I think I think it's nice to have children's books in different avenues like this. You know, well, yes. Yes, the main thing is people grab them on their way out because they don't want to walk. Because these are big books. These are, look, big. That's not some little bitty book you can put in your purse. So yeah. anyway, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed writing that book because I just just fell in love with Leon Coffey. He was so nice and accommodating. I think every bone in his body has been broken and he's had several concussions because he used to be he used to be a bull rider, but even as a bull fighter, you know, he would get bounced around and I don't think he was ever gored, but ooh, bad. I mean, he, he, yeah, he hit the, he hit the dust a lot, but um, anyway, people love him. The crowd goes nuts when he comes out on the field. Well, I think it's amazing that you open that door too, because there's not many children's books out there about rodeos. No. And you know what, I, what was a, a learning experience for this was you have to stay on that bull or that bronking horse for eight seconds to qualify. So they have to hold on to the, the saddle horn with their hand up in the air for at least eight seconds to qualify. Then they can jump off if they haven't already been pitched off. But um, yes, it's, that's that's the eight second rule. That's what that means. Well, eight seconds is a long time when you're writing something like that. Eight seconds is a long time. And, you know, sometimes, I mean, I've watched those bulls are so crazy. I mean, some of those guys get beat up just before they ever get out of the chute because, you know, the bulls just bleh, all over the place. So what's the name of the the person that runs out? In the, it, I always called it the clown. I thought it was no, the clown. We don't call the clowns anymore. <laughs> His oh. name is Leon Coffey. Mr. Leon, Leon Coffey. Coffey, the world's greatest, brightest bullfighter of all time. And he's been inducted into the Cowboy Hall of Fame and uh, a lot. Yeah, it's all in my book. It's all. See, there's Mr. Leon Coffey. He's great. <laughs> <laughs> so saying, we're, almost at the, and we're almost at the end here. I want to talk about some of the awards that you received, uh, oh, like yeah. the ABC uh, 13 Woman of Distinction. Oh, Okay. Let's talk a little bit about that for viewers out there that might want to know a little bit more about that one. Well, it's um, it, the, the group, ABC News or whoever it is, they just select a certain amount of women. I think my year was maybe it was eight women. And it's based on your philanthropic efforts, things you've done, 
you know, how, I guess how successful you are in the community. And, um, it's a humongous honor. I mean, that was so thrilled to get that because, um, I don't know. It's just something fun to celebrate. It was just, I was happy to get that. That was, a, you know, cause you get a new dress and my granddaughter came in and my daughter and her husband and we, my husband, we were all at the ceremony and I walked down that little runway <laughs> in my dress. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the book monster book award a uh, story monster book. Award. Yes. Story monsters. Well, that is you, they have a contest every year and they have a lot of different categories and you select the categories you want to be in. One of the categories is, excuse me, illustrations or the book cover or the book itself. So I just always enter it for the book and um, then they just pick, you know, for different categories. And um, so I was thrilled to have been, I think every one of my books have won something from the story monster uh platform whichever category it is purple monster or whatever they are yes so zane what message would you like to give to all the little kids out there you know just be nice to yourself be nice to your friends be nice to your parents and read books the whole there's a whole world out there for you to read books it increases your vocabulary your imagination it could take you anywhere you want to go so read books and read them to your little siblings that's that's my message and what message do you have for the adults be nice to yourself <laughs> be nice to others <laughs> and read to your children <laughs> and have a burger <laughs> and have a burger for Pete's sake <laughs> let's flip the burgers right let's really get it out there um yes. you know it is really truly amazing on how we connect and how stories bring us together and bring back memories of childhood when we hear yes. just the titles of children's books um and i'm big on children's books because i feel that we need more of them out there we need more of that imagination coming out the colors you know let's get bright let's let's just write books let's so again <laughs> yes <laughs> so again we do have a contest that's going to be going out miss as well create a flyer we'll give it two weeks and we'll see how many nursery rhymes we get and then i'll send them to zane and we'll go through for the nursery rhyme four lines Age write a nursery rhyme <laughs> age appropriate and we will and then we, we will announce the winner and we will get zane to uh you'll get a set of books give you a set of yeah, books that. and there you go early christmas gifts guys come on yes. you gotta start shopping yes. now don't wait the last minute because you wait for the last minute then you never get what you want no you don't get the colors you want the sizes you need so again, before we wrap up, we have less than two minutes. I want to get the pajamas. So if you could hold the pajamas up and hold the okay. books up so everybody can see the books, see the pajamas, and we're going to do a last show. Okay. Available. NeimanMarcus.com. Here's the bottoms. Look how cute. These are size fours, but they come in size two to ten. And then as they've got the illustrations from all my books this one and obviously this one the original world's first tooth fairy but i would highly encourage you to get those pajamas because they come in a beautiful gift set with the ribbon and their each pair of pajamas is paired with a book and uh it just makes for a nice gift set um you know, if you're going to a baby shower or um have to get some little child a gift kids love pajamas i used to buy my grandson's pajamas all the time every holiday they had every holiday pajamas but and they would have these if they were big enough <laughs> if you had them in the adult size i would buy a set <laughs> i would too i love them i love pajamas my kids always ask me mom what do you want for christmas pajamas pajamas i just pajamas. want pajamas <laughs> and you're like mom but we bought you pajamas last year no pajamas <laughs> yep <laughs> Well, well, really broke. <laughs> Zane, I really want to thank you for joining me on Tea Time. I want to thank a special shout out to Savage Unfiltered Podcast as well. He was a Tea Time guest. Check out his podcast as well. Uh, thank you for the moral support. Thank you to all the viewers and listeners out there. I could not do this with all, all, 
all of you is out there. Share these tea times, subscribe to the channel. And if there's a tea time that resonates with you, give it to a, a coworker, give it to another platform, give it to another podcast, give it to another radio. That's what Miss Liz is here all about. I will see everybody on Thursday for three shows and we'll be talking about multicultural um, acceptance and ch uh, children's writing so and it'll be all children's books again so we got a show for you on thursday so until then i will see everybody thursday morning 10 a.m eastern center time for the first tea time and i want to thank you again zane for joining me on tea time with miss liz oh i loved it i feel like i made a new friend <laughs>